Hello everyone, now let us discuss about 2023 ICD-10CM coding guidelines for COVID-19 or coronavirus. In the current session, we will be focusing on various aspects like when COVID-19 should be coded. It should be coded in confirmed cases only. And next, we will be discussing about the sequencing of codes, the acute respiratory manifestations of COVID-19 infections, the non-respiratory manifestations of COVID-19 infection and what is the code for exposure to COVID and what is the code for screening of COVID-19 infection. We will be discussing what must be coded without definitive COVID-19 diagnosis and what is the code for asymptomatic individuals who test positive for COVID and also the code for personal history of COVID-19 and the coding guidelines related to follow-up visits after COVID-19 infection has resolved and the code for encounter for antibody screening and we will be discussing about the multi-system inflammatory syndrome which occurs due to COVID. Now coming to code only confirmed cases. So when must be the code for COVID-19 infection should be assigned and the code is U07.1. So we must code only a confirmed diagnosis of 2019 novel coronary virus disease, which is also called as COVID-19 as documented by provider or documentation of a positive COVID-19 test as a result. So for confirmed diagnosis, we must assign the code U07.1. And there is an exception for this rule, especially in case of hospital inpatient guideline because in this context confirmation does not require documentation of a positive test result of COVID-19. The provider's documentation that the individual has COVID-19 is sufficient. In case of inpatient coding, confirmation does not require the documentation of positive test result. A simple provider documentation that the individual has COVID-19 infection is sufficient. So the first rule is we must code only the confirmed cases and the cases which are suspected, possible, likely should not be coded with U07.1. Coming to the next guideline that is sequencing of codes. There are certain specified conditions which often take the PDX such as obstetrics, sepsis, COVID-19 infection in newborn and COVID-19 in lung transplanted patient. So in certain special cases, though the patient has COVID-19 infection and that is the reason for encounter, some other code must be given as a PDX. For example, in case of obstetrics, OB cases, O98.5. That is nothing but the other viral diseases complicating pregnancy, childbirth and purpurium must be used as a PDX and after that COVID-19 infection must be coded. Whenever a pregnant woman is diagnosed with COVID-19, first O98.5 series code must be given. After that U07.1 must be coded. And similarly in case of sepsis. In case of sepsis, which code must be assigned as PDX, whether the COVID-19 infection or the sepsis, it depends upon the reason for admission. If the reason for admission is COVID-19 infection and the person develops sepsis after admission, the PDX must be COVID-19 only. And similarly, in case of COVID-19 in newborn, there are two scenarios and we will discuss further. And whenever COVID-19 infection occurs in lung transplanted patient, code from T86 series and an appropriate complication code must be documented before COVID-19 infection. Now coming to COVID-19 in newborn, there are two scenarios. Whenever the newborn is diagnosed with COVID-19, you can simply directly assign U07.1. But in the second case, if the condition, if the physician document 
that the condition was contracted in utero or during the birth process. The newborn is diagnosed with COVID but the condition is contracted. If it is documented that the condition is contracted in utero or during the birth process, then we must assign code P35.8. That is nothing but other congenital viral disease. And after that, you must assign U07.1. That is nothing but COVID-19 code. And whenever we code the birth episode in newborn record, appropriate code from the category Z38. That is nothing but live born infants according to place of birth and type of delivery should be assigned as a principal diagnosis. Now let us discuss some of the acute respiratory manifestations of COVID. COVID infection might lead to other manifestations such as pneumonia, acute bronchitis, bronchitis NOS, lower respiratory tract infraction, acute respiratory failure, etc. So the appropriate codes whenever acute respiratory manifestations of COVID occur are whenever pneumonia occurs as a result of COVID, you must quote U07.1 and J12.82. And similarly for acute bronchitis, you must quote U07.1 and J20.8. And for bronchitis NOS, you must quote U07.1 and J40. For lower respiratory infection or acute respiratory infection, you must assign the codes U07.1 and J22. For respiratory infection NOS, you must assign U07.1 and J98.8. And for acute respiratory distress syndrome, if COVID-19 results acute respiratory distress syndrome, first we must quote U07.1 and then J80. For acute respiratory failure, you must assign the code from U07.1 and J96.0 series. The star mark indicates there is further subclassification. Now coming to the other conditions or scenarios and the respective codes. For non-respiratory manifestations of COVID, U07.1 should be the PDX followed by the respective manifestations. And for screening of COVID, the code is Z11.52. And for signs and symptoms without definitive diagnosis, patient has the signs and symptoms related to COVID, but there is no definitive diagnosis. In such cases, we must assign the appropriate signs and symptoms such as cough, fever, headache, etc. And next case is signs and symptoms and also has a, if the patient has signs and symptoms and also has a contact with or exposure to COVID. In such cases, along with the signs and symptoms, first we must quote the respective signs and symptoms and along with that we must quote Z20.822 which is the quote for contact with and exposure to COVID-19. And for asymptomatic individuals who test positive for COVID-19 infection, the regular U07.1 code must be given. Even though the patient is asymptomatic, but the test result is positive, then we must consider this as a confirmed case and code U07.1. And for personal history of COVID-19 infection, the code is Z86.16. And for follow-up visits after COVID-19 infection has resolved, we must assign the appropriate code of Z09 and history of COVID that is nothing but Z86.16. In addition, the code for encounter for antibody testing is Z01.84. And whenever the patient develops a multi-system inflammatory syndrome as a result of COVID, Multi-system inflammatory syndrome may occur as a result of COVID-19 infection. The respective codes are as follows. Whenever the patient has active COVID infection and develops multi-system inflammatory syndrome, we must assign U07.1 and M35.81, which is the code for multi-system inflammatory syndrome. And if the patient has history of COVID and develops multi-system inflammatory syndrome 
we must assign m35.81 and u09.8 this is a new code and this is a new guideline and for suspected exposure if the patient has suspected exposure and it develops MSI we must code M35.81 and Z20.822. Now let us discuss the new addition of 2023. Under the current year, one more guideline has been added that is under immunization codes. For patients that have not received any type of COVID-19 vaccine, then you should code Z28.310. And for the patients who are partially vaccinated for COVID-19, you need to assign Z28.311. These two are the new codes that have been added for the year 2023. Now coming to screening for COVID-19. The code for screening for COVID-19 is Z11.52. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, it is not appropriate to assign a screening code. For the encounters for COVID-19 testing, Include pre, including the pre-operative testing, assign the code exposure to COVID-19, that is Z20.822 for screening of COVID. Let us put focus on multi-system inflammatory syndrome because, because of the new revision of codes, the coding scenario has altered for multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Let us discuss how. So there are three scenarios whenever we code multi-system inflammatory syndrome. The first scenario is if the patient has active COVID infection and develops multi-system inflammatory syndrome, then we must code U07.1 and M35.81. There is no change in this coding guideline. Previously, we used to used to use these codes and now also we are assigning the same codes. And the second case is if an individual has history of COVID-19 and develops MIS, which is nothing but multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Here, the MIS is considered as sequelae for COVID-19 infection. For that reason, previously we used to code M35.81 and B94.8, which is nothing but the sequelae of other specified infectious and parasitic diseases. But now, Due to the addition of new code, that is nothing but the post-COVID condition, U09.9, for all the sequelae of COVID-19 infections, we must assign U09.9. So, if the individual has history of COVID-19 infection and develops MIS, the appropriate codes are M35.81 and U09.9. This is the new coding guideline. And the third scenario is suspected exposure. If the patient has suspected exposure and develops MIS. Here, there is no change. The codes are M35.81 and Z20.822. Now, the next guideline is post COVID condition. Post-COVID conditions include a wide range of physical and mental health conditions that are experienced by some patients that are not present, that are present for four or more weeks after the COVID-19 infection. One important note is it should not be assigned for the manifestations of active COVID-19 infection. Post-COVID condition code, that is U0, U09.9, should not be assigned for manifestations of active COVID-19 infection. Here you can see the post-COVID condition is nothing but post-acute sequelae of COVID or COVID long hauler, COVID long haulers. Then U09.9 should be given as SDX, not as PDX. Now let us discuss some of the post-COVID conditions. Some of the post-COVID conditions are loss of smell, which is given by the code R43.8, and similarly loss of taste. This is also given by R43.8. Multi-inflammatory syndrome, which is given by M35.81, pulmonary embolism, which is given by A26 and the code is further expandable, pulmonary fibrosis, J84.10, and chronic respiratory failure, which is given by the code J96.1, and this is further expandable. These are some of the post-COVID conditions, some, not all.
Now coming to the scenarios of assigning post-COVID condition or sequelae of COVID-19. For post-COVID condition or COVID long hauler, that is U09.9. Code first the condition, that is any condition that is a loss of taste, loss of smell, pulmonary fibrosis, chronic respiratory failure. In that way, any of the condition or symptom followed by U09.9 code. This is always an STX, not a PDX. Second scenario, when a post-COVID condition is still existing and patient develops new active COVID-19 infection. So, for example, loss of taste is a post-COVID condition that is still existing and patient develops an active COVID infection. Again, then both U07.1, which is nothing but the COVID code, and U09.9, which is nothing but post-COVID condition code, can be coded in conjunction. Now, as we have discussed earlier, this is the new addition under immunization codes. The patients who have not received any type of COVID-19 vaccine must be assigned by the code Z28.310. And for partially vaccinated patients for COVID-19, the code is Z28.311. This is the new addition. By this, we complete the coding guidelines for COVID-19. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.